Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wang. Uh, yes, I contributed to the book, uh, and uh, the essay was on China-Africa uh, partnership. Uh, my good brother and uh, friend, uh, Ambassador Rossman, has uh, already articulated that aspect, so I wouldn't repeat uh, myself on that. Now, let me, uh, my, like my colleague, Ambassador Mohammed, uh, look at the two issues you have asked us to contribute our perspective. One is China and uh, the world in changing context. The second is our bilateral relationship. In fact, I haven't done uh, justice to our bilateral relationship. I should have contributed on that to the book, but I have done it, uh, but I don't regret. Now, what is a changing global context? I think Ambassador Mohammed has uh, said it all. Uh, truly speaking, I think we are passing through a very difficult uh, period of, in our uh, history, not only the pandemic, but uh, the current global situation is very changing, very complex turbulent, unpredictable, and volatile. Uh, in fact, in some regards, I think humanity is confronted with existential issues of uh, whether climate or peace or security, uh, and so on and so forth. When I uh, saw the topic, uh, I tried to look at China and the world uh, from four major considerations. Uh, one is Chinese foreign policy. Uh, which uh, recently, in fact, uh, the Prime Minister uh, reiterated uh, the China's foreign policy that uh, it pursues independent foreign policy. Uh, I'm raising this because it has a very important implication for us because when China pursues independent foreign policy, it also respects policy independence of other countries. That is the basis for uh, China and the Ethiopia bilateral relationship. China respects our national priority, China respects our uh, policy uh, that we depend for our uh, uh, national uh, development. The second is strategy. Uh, China's approach has been what we call cooperative and collaborative approach. Uh, and uh, currently the Ethiopian and Chinese cooperation or partnership is termed as comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership. Cooperative because we agree on our priorities and there is no imposition and there is no conditions attached to our relationship. I find that extremely uh, important. The third is uh, uh, China's, the second pillar is uh, China's global standing, whether it is demographic, economic, military, diplomacy. Uh, I think uh, China, uh, has a role to play in balancing the global uh, world order. In that regard, uh, China uh, has a role to play. There is a responsibility that comes with it, but at the same time, there is also expectation and that China wants to have a place in global uh, issues. Uh, that element, I think, uh, in what we call uh, having a fairer rule-based just global order, I think, uh, is important, and China has a role to play in that regard. That's uh, what I look at it as the second pillar of uh, China and the world. The third is uh, China's uh, experience in uh, development transformation. Uh, we all know that, uh, as my brother Mohammed said, China transformed in a very shortest period of time. Uh, so there are huge and a lot of experiences that China can uh, share. It has best practices that uh, others can learn. My own country, Ethiopia, has been a uh, beneficiary from uh, sharing, for instance, agricultural transformation uh, China has achieved, how it moved from agriculture to industrialization, and now how it is moving uh, to uh, high tech. Uh, so, uh, Within the context of South-South cooperation, within the context of FOCAC, I think China's experience in transformation is relevant and China could play a role in that regard. The fourth pillar I have looked at is China has recently taken a very important global initiatives, uh, which we cannot undermine, um, the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, many of us are uh, members of the Belt and Road Initiative. We joined the Belt and the Road Initiative because we found it beneficial to us. We found it beneficial to us in our infrastructure connectivity, not only at national level, but uh, also connectivity in the continent, connectivity in the region. 
so we saw benefit uh, in it and join uh, such a global initiative. Now, uh, there is also uh, another uh, initiative, the recently uh, initiated global development initiative also uh, is very important. Now, saying this, I think uh, I'm not saying that uh, China's role in the global, uh, changing global context has no challenge, has no uh, problem. We have problems, for instance, in our relationship uh, issues related to Belt and Road Initiative. Capacity is an issue, technology is an issue, finance is an issue, and so on and so forth. But what is the solution to this? The solution, I think, to this is, again, more cooperation, not less cooperation, and uh, that is how I look at it. In, uh, I hope and expect that uh, China will play a balancing uh, act in making the current global order fairer, just and all inclusive. Finally, let me briefly say about uh, strengthening uh, Ethiopia-China cooperation in the post-COVID world. For us, it is not only post-COVID, but post-conflict uh, period in Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia's cooperation uh, with China is based on the same principles that uh, I have said uh, regarding Chinese uh, foreign policy. Uh, China respects Ethiopia's policy independence. Our uh, cooperation with China, as again, uh, Ambassador Mohammed said that uh, it is based on equality, mutual respect, mutual benefit, and uh, uh, mutual interest. These are critical values. Uh, these are fundamental pillars uh, for any uh, relationship or partnership uh, to have sustainable uh, cooperation, because Mutual benefit, without mutual benefit, there cannot be a sustainable uh, partnership. If a partnership benefits one side, uh, certainly it cannot be uh, sustainable. That's why uh, our relationship is based on those critical principles and that there is a good uh, uh, deal of uh, trust, political trust uh, at, our, uh, <clears throat> at all levels. Now, when we say comprehensive strategic partnership, we also look at government to government, people to people. Like uh, my colleague from Cuba said, we also have party to party relationship and uh, we have a relationship at business level. Uh, so that makes it uh, also comprehensive. Now, before COVID, uh, the onset of COVID, um, as I said, China became in the last 20 years, Ethiopia's largest trading partner major source of foreign direct investment and major financer of our infrastructure project, which we need badly. As a result of such a contribution, Ethiopia's economy grew in double digits. Uh, Chinese contribution uh, is significant. But let me remind again uh, my colleagues here that China participated in the policy framework that we have defined for our national priority. We have uh, never been uh, told or prescribed any policy uh, direction, which uh, I believe is extremely important. In post-COVID uh, world, uh, like again, um, uh, China came to Ethiopia's uh, rescue for in protecting and the prevention of COVID uh, much earlier than any other partner. Uh, provision of uh, personal protection equipment, the sizable one, sizable one, significant one actually. Not only that, but China sent uh, its health experts, medical experts to Ethiopia to work uh, with Ethiopian counterparts. Uh, again, a very significant contribution. China has donated uh, millions of vaccines uh, to population, to Ethiopia. Uh, we are uh, very grateful to that. We are looking forward, uh, but there are two important things, as, as I said, we would like to focus on digital economy. We would like to uh, focus on uh, building health capacity, health institution, and the health system, uh, because we have learned, I think, our own lesson uh, from uh, COVID. Uh, again, uh, we look for uh, foreign direct investment. We look to boost our uh, trade. We look, uh, uh, we will expect uh, technology transfer from China to Ethiopia, which has been, I think, flowing uh, smoothly. Uh, those are my thoughts, uh, Dr. Wang. Thank you. Good.